but welcome you two to the infinite library i'm your host shotgun shogun this is i think three actual uh podcasts in a row that i've actually done without forgetting uh to do one for like three or four months and then be like hey you know what i should probably do a podcast uh but is i'm gonna be joined by fart pancakes tonight uh fartsy introduce yourself to the people what's up uh my name is fart pancakes as shotgun shogun already said but most people just call me fartsy um i play a lot of epic seven for people that for some reason don't know me i stream on twitch at twitch.tv slash fart pancake all right well nice to have you on and for those of you who also uh don't remember uh fartsy was the commentator for the cci as well um so that was pretty that was pretty cool but um i don't really have too much in the way of hard topics um this time around i figured we would just have a little bit of a chat about things that have been going on uh one of the big things that a lot of people have been saying and the reason why we don't have a whole lot of new fresh fancy things to talk about um is the game's stagnation a lot of people have been feeling like the game has been very stagnant of late uh what's your take on that um i I have like several different takes on this whole stagnant thing so first of all um right now it might feel a little stagnant because we're not really getting new content um the only sort of new thing we got was the side story for the collab the fma collab Mm -hmm. everything else has just been you know side story reruns basically and um i can understand that before like during this whole time period basically we didn't really get new content because um from what i was told smilegate was busy focusing on wc and it seems like most of their resources were kind of allocated towards trying to work on WC. And recently that just ended. So you would think that we're going to start focusing on new content right now. But I guess they're still figuring things out. And now we're just getting reruns such as the Full Moon Festival one. And now this um, Advent side story, which I know a lot of people don't enjoy so much true but the really giga whales enjoy advent because you get the mod stones right um and and i think that that's a a big thing now one of the things like um and let me ask you this uh fart pancakes when you think of content um and we had a little bit and i have some some feelings on this i'm actually going to make a whole extra video myself uh covering stuff like this but what do you consider to be content for me uh content is things to do in the game so as long as you are actively engaged and have something to do i consider that content for example if they just came out with more abyss floors they started that challenge floor thing Mm -hmm. i thought it was going to be more consistent but it seems like they released 10 floors and then that was it and they're like yep That's it. So it's like, are we getting more floors or are we waiting half a year, a whole year? How is that going to work? Well, I mean, don't we um, normally wait like about half a year for like normal Abyss? Like, wasn't it like every like every six months or so we'd get like more Abyss floors? I don't think it was like yearly that we got Abyss floors. Uh, maybe yeah. it was. I, I don't know. I, I'd have to go back. I think it might have been it might have been yearly i'm not too sure but like i feel like for me right and like the other thing too you know when you say that it's like something that you're actively engaged in um do you think it's fair to say that people who instantaneously skip the story for the side story uh have no real right to complain about there not being any content because they're actively skipping the content that was put into the game yeah well i don't think it's those story skippers that complain about lack of content because they're just 
skipping through the story to get the rewards and then call it good. Right, so but I, I feel like I, I do feel like a lot of those people, uh, like I, I, I troll around a lot in like official Discord. Obviously, I troll around a lot on Stove, and there's a lot of chronic story skippers that are just like, oh, FMA collab sucked ass. Where's the real content? Blah blah blah. And I, I, I do think that it's a, it's, it's a similar, a similar group of people, but. Um, one other thing too, though, is I feel like we just got the balance patch notes, right? And regardless of whether you think that the balance patch was good or bad or mediocre or, you know, so stuff like that, I mean, that is still, you know, technically a, a change, right? And I feel like that is also potentially, you know, to content as well. Um, one thing that I think is always kind of interesting, you know, and to your point, you know, content being something that you're actively engaged in, um, if that's the case, then like realistically, the only thing in Epic seven that is, cons that would be considered actual content then would be what RTA, uh, PVP, Guild Wars and Abyss Wars, right? Because let's be yep. real side story. Yeah. We just auto it. Yeah, we, we put it on 20, 30 auto, 20 auto, whatever, uh, and then we're done with it. Um, hunts is, aren't content. Uh, to be honest, like I don't even really consider Arena for the most part to be content because I usually just use the same team uh, to just do whatever, if I even bother like with Arena. Yeah. You know, even uh, they even like brought that. up the idea that they're like, oh, we're going to do this whole arena thing where we do like 3v3 teams and like yeah. three different teams or whatever. And I'm like, what? More arena stuff? I don't know how I feel about this one. <laughs> yeah, I think that like realistically, like arena, I feel like if you're a PvP person, like arena just is what it is right arena is just basically pve pvp where like you're just doing pve against s stuff other people set up which i think is just kind of like eh, yeah i've never really been a big arena fan myself um i might try one season just to kind of push arena a little bit but at the end of the day like i mean arena is whatever like even guild wars it just feels like you know when it comes to guild wars and stuff like that you're just fighting the same teams over and over again um and it just kind of i don't know like as a content creator i don't even think a guild wars really makes for good content because it's just like yeah just pick hua young oh look exactly i, I, I picked hua young again uh and yeah the rewards you get out of it people feel like very dissatisfied with you know the amount of effort you put in to do guild wars just to mm -hmm. like what get one and a half summons for uh, mystics at most yeah that's so it doesn't that's true. feel that rewarding you know one thing to go back to like the content standpoint is um do you feel that content has to have a certain baseline of reward like actual tangible in-game reward to be worth it because sometimes i feel like a good story is reward enough to play through certain things well if you put it that way i want to see more actual animated cutscenes. holy shit you know? yes please i thought that moonlight theater was gonna be that yeah it's literally you just read through a dialogue and the least you could have done if you wanted to do it that way was to have some voice lines because you have the voice actors you know already voicing these characters you could make moonlight theater a little bit more exciting by doing what they did now but adding the voice lines on top of it okay. so that you, but... you have something more to it if you're not going to make it at like actual like animation yeah but but farsi it's it's smilegate they're a, a small indie company i don't think that they have the the budget to to fully voice out um you know story content you know i There's mean other gotchas out there and is smilegate really indie though no that's a, a money. <laughs> yeah that's a that's a huge joke no they have they okay. have metric piles of cash uh to do stuff like that and i mean you know 
that can segue us into the next thing, the, the Genshin Impact anime, and the fact that Epic 7, literally their tagline is play the animation, where's our animation? Yeah, that's what is really interesting, because the only thing we have to work off of is like seeing their S3s, which is really satisfying. Oh, for but sure. But I, I think it was more satisfying when, at the beginning, when we played episodes one and two, I felt like we had more actual animated cutscenes from those. And then it seemed like it kind of started falling off once they got to episode three and four. Oh, yeah. It seemed like they got a little stingy or lazy or something about adding in actual animated cutscenes. And then now we get maybe one animated or two animated cutscenes for the entire you know, episode. Yeah, or a and... year in general. I mean, we typically only get, like, the, the PVs for, like, summer yeah. and, like, we Christmas, just... right? I think we got one for Christmas with, like, uh, last year with, like, the Euphine, Bomb Model Kana, whatever, and then we got the Summer Charlotte one. But, like, you know, to your point, I actually watched somebody recently start the game. It was a, another streamer I, I'd never seen before, and they were, like, starting the game from fresh. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll pop in here. I'm not doing anything right now. And I completely forgot how absolutely badass the the beginning of the game was with, like, the PVs, with, like, the animated, you know, all the anime cutscenes and stuff like that. And, like, I remember when I first started playing the game, I was like, wow, this is awesome. I hope that we get more of these, you know. And uh, you're right. Like, once we started getting further in, we got, like, the teaser trailer, like, for, you know, Mortelix and stuff like that. And then there wasn't really much in game like at all like i would have loved to see like you know a, an animated uh cut scene after every boss fight you know i i feel like that yeah. would have been like a, a good time for them to bam here's a cool ass anime cut scene to move the story forward type of deal um and yeah i don't know it just it, it just does feel kind of like they got a little on the lazy side yeah, going off of that, even the same thing with the collabs. I wasn't around for the first GG collab, but I did discover that they put so much effort into that first collab. They made actual, like, cutscenes. They made dedicated mm -hmm. animations to advertise the collaboration with E7 and Guilty Gear. Yep. And then for every collab thereafter, we didn't get any good marketing any you know special animations not even an in-depth collaborative side story and the story is typically the same it's like hey we ended up in this world let's figure out how to get back home all right problem solved see y'all later the re-zero the, the re-zero story was probably one of the most i actually wish that i would have hit the skip button throughout that whole yeah. story I, I remember reading that, and I was just like, you know, people meme on it, but I read it, and I'm like, there's no way that this collab wasn't slapped together in, like, 30 minutes. I'm like, I could have written a better di like a better story at, like, 3 in the morning after I woke up to use the bathroom. I'd just be sitting in there, and I, like, was tiredly write a story, and it would have been better than that. I... I absolutely hated the ReZero story. I actually do think that for the FMA story, they did okay. I liked that they added in, like, the the Notos Arena stuff because uh, that, was kind of, that was kind of interesting and gave us a little bit more story into our own story, I guess. Because I've always thought that the Arena story is pretty sweet. But I'm going to be honest, yeah. I always skipped over the arena story. <laughs> Have you? You should go back and read it. It's actually kind of cool. Like, Nodos is super badass. And, like, actually, canonically, Zeno is is super, super badass. He's just like, yeah, he's, the arena story is really, really cool. I want the arena. Like, I actually don't care in the slightest about a din right now. Like, at all. Like, I don't care about Chapter 4's story, and even remotely. 
But, like, I want to know more about, like, the Moonlight story. I want to know more about the Arena story. And I kind of hate that, like, you get drip fed, drip fed the Arena story and, like, the Moonlight stories so, so slowly. And I feel like there's a lot of story potential. I just feel like they're releasing it just so slow that by the time it comes out, like... A lot of people have either quit or they just don't care anymore or, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, but I guess, you know, 10 year plan, we've just got to wait for another six years and then come back and then maybe we'll get all the story. Yeah, I kind of wonder if Smilegate has some kind of set schedule they want to consistently follow for releasing this type of content as far as stories go or if they have like a dedicated, you know, storyboard person mm -hmm. that has ideas in mind and they just roll out segments at uh, certain time frames or if they're like just stuck and they don't have ideas to put out. I don't know why it does take so long to release this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, for sure, like I mean, I obviously don't know because I'm not like, you know, privy to that information. I'm not in the uh you know the industry too hard but it does seem like they have like a very set schedule i, I wonder too if it's like a, a drip feed so that that way they can push timelines like certain ways right like oh this is when our story comes out so this is when we have story content in these intervals so they're guaranteed to have x amount of content for however many months is already done type of stuff right so you know that's very possible that it's done that way and then that gives them flexibility to like move things around from like a, obviously like a project management standpoint right um you want to you don't want to just dump everything and then be like behind because imagine that even though most people just skip all the story most people probably don't give a sh give a crap about you know chapter four if they were like hey guys we're really sorry but we have to delay chapter four by two weeks because it's just not ready and everybody who's never read the story in any way shape or form would be like that's fine, Smilegate. You know what? It's it's understandable. Uh, I'll happily take my ML5 selector for the okay. the literal uh, devastation that you have wrought upon my life by not putting the story out on time. Because um, that's just how people are. So this way they have like a set schedule. X comes out at this time. It's kind of like when they were talking about like the buffs. Uh, to units right they're like hey look we're gonna change this and then it's gonna be every two months you know we're gonna do it so that it doesn't run in super hard into the end of the arena se or the rta season because we our rta season runs for x amount of time and then you know these are gonna be on these times so that they don't run into the end of that so i, I think in terms of like you know content per se i i think it's fine i think that like one of the things that gets me with mobile games is what mobile game has riveting content? Like, have you played a mobile game where you're like, holy shit, the content in this is so good that you started uh, like from the beginning, right? I'm not talking like I've, I'm going into Genshin right now and I've got four years of content, three years of content waiting for me. I'm talking like you started the game up and then you're going with the natural life cycle. I can't really say that I've ever played a gotcha where it starts off exciting and riveting right off the bat because the typical formula for everything's really the same. You start off a game, you get your selective summons, you start going through adventure, you slowly start unlocking content where you level up, you can start slowly unlocking PvP stuff, then you get, you get some kind of hunt or whatever that you start farming to get your gears or runes or whatever, and, you know, start working on building up your units, and then on the side, you farm a currency to go summon some more units, and that's basically, like, the basic formula of every RPG and gotcha out there. Yeah. So, I can't say you know, 
there's something like that out there that's like super riveting, exciting, like, oh, right off the bat, I'm excited to play this. Um, but I can say as of right now, Epic 7 does keep me engaged more than other RPGs out there. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because they are free to play friendly, so you can sit here and do a whole lot and not feel bad about it. Whereas there's other games that are more time gated and if you don't spend on there, you're just kind of stuck uh, imagine, working with what you have. Yeah, imagine if there was like a daily limit on how many times you could go into RTA. Well, I think that would be good, though, to set apart the actual good players versus um, the game spammers. But at the same time, wow. RTA is... Farsi's throwing down good players versus the game spammers. Wow. Because what if you just play five games a day, you win all of those, and then you're just constantly at the top of the ladder? I agree. And then you could be that guy that plays a hundred games just to get the same results as the guy that played the five games a day. I, I, I do actually agree with you. Uh, I said the last couple of seasons that um, if you had sub 50% win rate, uh, you should not get a legend. You should not get a legend frame. The only thing legendary about that is the fact that you played 5,000 games. Like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's that's really the the end, the end, be-all, end-all of that. Like, I, and people were like, well, you have a 47% win rate. And I'm like, yeah, and I don't deserve legend. Yeah, that's just, that's just how it is. I mean, I didn't get legend, obviously, but, like, I wouldn't have deserved it anyways. And I actually wouldn't have felt very good about getting it. I mean, I would have got it, and, you know. Uh, it's like an RNG win, right? You still take the points. Uh, you don't necessarily feel good about the points that you got, but you still take the points, right? Um, but yeah, I've always thought that like um, there should be a scale of points where, you know, if you have a higher win rate, then you should be higher than somebody who just spams games nonstop. Um, but at the same time with Epic 7, with RT being so RNG heavy, like, it would feel real bad if, like, you could only, let's say, do 10 games a day. And let's just say you just got absolutely dumpstered RNG-wise. Yeah. Like, exactly. I, yeah. That does happen. You can you can go on, like, a 10-game lose streak, and it's not even your fault sometimes. Um, so that's a really, you know, negative thing I don't like about the RNG in here. Because you could be, you know, really fast, and then... For some reason, the game decides, yeah, we're just going to speed RNG you for all these matches just for fun. Yeah. Um, on top of that, as far as the content that's available on this game, a lot of people that have been playing this game since the beginning that are persistent and consistent every day um, are already end game by this point, And the only thing that's left for them to do is just to RTA um, other than to just farm the rewards from side stories and stuff yeah so it would feel really bad to not have anything to do in this game when you've put in so much time and effort just to do nothing oh no yeah that's uh, exactly i was just making the hypothetical that if it had a daily limit that it would be absolutely terrible i think the fact that the epic 7 doesn't have a uh, limit on rta uh doesn't like um doesn't take away your energy if you fail or run something like that i think those are really really good um because yeah if you if you could only do 10 a uh you know if you could only do 10 entries into rta a day like you would just come in you would do your 10 games and then you would just go play something else and i think like the big thing with a lot of games is that they are they try to push you to be in their game as much as humanly possible because the more that you play in a game the more that you uh develop a uh i, wanna, I don't want to necessarily say addiction but like you know it's you know you're addicted to the game right if you're playing the game yeah. for 12 hours a day you're more than likely uh more willing to like spend on the game so being able to rta all day every day uh, eventually you're going to an attachment. There we go. Yeah. Not an addict. You, you get an attachment to the game and, and then the game tries to detach, disattach, unattach your money from your wallet. Um, so I, I do think that that that's really good. Um, 
And, and I think that actually them going to the like the background farming mode while you can also do RTA is going to just bait in so many more so many more whales as well because now you're going to be actually like they they said for sure that you can RTA while you can background play you can do I thought, you can do I any other was... mode really i thought and it was just other pve content no i'm pretty sure it's every other mode at least that's the way it reads to me and if it's like if it's like dislikes which i think is what they're literally going to um copy like one for one since let's be real a lot of the stuff that epic 7 does copies from other games which i actually don't think is bad um if that's the case then you'll be able to pvp so it'll just be in the running in the background you'll be able to rta you come back you know take your rewards set it back up again and then go right back into into rta you can even do other hunts yeah yeah you just can't do it with uh your repeat pe repeat pet that's kind of scary because during hunt buff events you don't have to worry about running into any whales on the rta ladder because they're <laughs> going to be busy farming those right. hunts now you will yeah oh man more competition that's right that's right um but i do think that it's um it's good because like let's be real um especially even during hunt buffs right like watching and from a, a stream content side wise too like literally just sitting there watching your hunt team for 24 hours is is really really boring yeah it's like super super boring well i typically don't sit there and watch my runs anyway i would just let that play on the side and go do something else you know go play another I game mean, yeah. go do work whatever <laughs> go watch an anime yeah i mean i i usually stream them though and so it's like hey guys we're gonna stream this for 24 hours because because I need to, uh, you know, Twitch needs to give me my uh, my ad revenue, um, you know, because because Daddy Bezos told me I had to put in a certain amount of ads this month or else they come to my house and repossess my dogs. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just have, being able to, like, do other stuff in game, RTA from a streamer content standpoint, I, I think that it's a lot better because, I mean, during hunt buffs, like, stream content-wise... It's, hey, guys, watch me do hunts while I also play, you know, Fortnite or some other game or something like that. So this way they can still do, streamers can still do RTA and stuff like that while having that in the background, um, which I think is, which I think is, uh, is good for the game as a whole. So, um, Would you say they implemented that for because they had streamers in mind that you know they didn't have any content to stream during hunt buffs or is it just that as a whole everyone wants to go play rta while they're running hunts so i think that i, I don't think that it had anything to do with the streamers uh by the way hey epic seven thank you for the uh raid welcome everybody um i am shotgun shogun we're doing a podcast it's me and uh fart pancakes i'm sure that you guys all know fart pancakes but hello, i do hello. think i do think though from like a just a mechanical standpoint a lot of people wanted the background the background farming right nobody really wants to sit there and watch wyvern like yeah if you're using an emulator you're just going to put it up on the other screen and you're going to go do whatever else right but like this way you can you can rta you can do abyss you can farm side story uh you know literally you can farm another hunt imagine the amount of gear that people like jinte are going to be able to get on hunt buffs if you are able to manually run B13 and auto wyvern 13 at the same time like not manual but like manual auto you know what i mean like you're gonna be able to double up on hunt buffs in theory that's gonna be insane like i don't think yeah. that was part of the background um farming idea they had in mind oh but i'm sure they did but yeah on that note um 
I specifically remember in another podcast with um, Epic 7 official stream, there was a segment where they asked about like quality of life things you wanted to add into the game. Mm -hmm. And I actually voiced that I wanted to add background farming, but my idea for the background farming was more so that you could run your hunts and then just have it in the background so you're not taking up um, like battery on your phone you can go do something else on your phone because after all it is a mobile game so yeah. if you do happen to be playing it on mobile uh, you could just run your hunts and then go watch your youtube videos or go look at your memes on twitter or something like that so that's what i had in mind with the background thing so it looks like they still they they maybe they took the background um farming thing into consideration but they did something else with it where it's like they still want you to play the game right but at least you can run the farms in the background as you do something else yeah and so that was like goes back to like what i was saying earlier right like i don't think that like any game wants most games don't want you to afk offline farm because it takes you out of the game and you're doing something else they want you in the game as much as humanly possible to get that attachment right and so i think that this is a good a good mix of both honestly like i'm not a huge fan of like the offline farming just because like then i don't feel like i'm as attached well, to that game right I like wasn't i understand saying, like offline uh, farming per se but yeah. more so like battery saving mode yeah because sometimes you have to be out and about but you still want to farm and right. it's like, oh man, I just did 20 wyvern runs, now my phone is dead. True. Uh, if you had the battery saving mode, maybe you could have done 40 runs before your phone died. You need to charge your phone more often if you're if you're losing battery through that much uh, through 20 wyvern farms. Farsi, are uh, you are you one of those chronic like 10% battery enjoyers? Uh, I don't leave my house often, but when I do, my phone always <laughs> dies. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I think, like, the problem is, like, um, and this actually came up when we originally got the Pet Snacks idea. Uh, a lot of people really, really wanted just straight up, like, offline farming. Uh, they wanted, like, 20. They didn't want to cap on, um, on how many runs a pet could do. They wanted it offline. And I'm like, at that point, like... Well, one, the problem would the the problem that would arise after that would just be people being like, well, OK, but why do I have to use energy now? Because if you can run it like offline, right, you're going to run through all of your energy and then you're going to be like, but I didn't even do anything. Right. Like I can't um, you know, why can't I just run hunts 24 seven without energy type of deal? Um, I think that, like, that would open up another can of worms, whereas, like, at least if you're in the game and you're using your energy, it feels like you're accomplishing something. I don't know. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, psychological stuff that goes behind that with, like, with gaming, and that's, like, a whole other can of worms to get into. But I think it's a good, a good, um compromise where like you can still do other stuff but yeah i would like a battery like battery saving mode would be pretty good not that i leave the house either uh you know so mine's always up on an emulator but you know which speaking of emulators because i see gimmick and mashu in the chat here which i just did hydrate mashu you just can't see it you know what would be really really cool fartsies if we had a pc client that was oh, a pc definitely. client and not just uh, a glorified emulator from Facebook or Amazon or Windows 11, uh, but like a yeah. full-fledged PC client that doesn't drop me in the middle of all of my RTA matches and take 20 minutes to start my Epic 7. Hmm. And imagine if, uh, if Epic 7 released on, you know, platforms like Steam. Imagine how many more players we could get into our already small player base. It's true. I, yeah. I know a lot of people would appreciate the game being released on Steam and having the actual game, its own PC client that you could just pull up and play. Like one thing too, I think like especially recently is a lot of games that have been coming out specific like have their own PC clients or at least like 
a they're made by like a company that has like a PC client hub, right? Um, and, and I've been seeing that a bit more and more. I mean, with things like um, obviously with like Star Rail, Genshin, uh, ZZZ, the the Hoyover stuff. Like most likely, all of that is going to be coming through their PC client, and I think that that also just allows for a mobile game to kind of move further. Like, uh, take it if like Smilegate were to go, okay, well here's a PC client that can also run uh, Lost Ark or um, what's you know some other. Um, Smilegate games, Crossfire, stuff like that. And then that way, too, when you log into the PC client for, let's say you don't care about Epic 7, you just want to play Lost Ark. Well, at the top of your PC client, it might go, oh, hey, have you seen Epic 7? It's even, even Raid Shadow Legends has their own PC client. That's true. You just download Plarium Play, and then it's like, look, you can... You can have Raid Shadow Legends and whatever else they have. Okay, but Farsi, for the for Raid Shadow Legends, you're gonna have to forget everything you've ever known about everything that you've ever known about mobile gaming because that is the most prolific project of our time. Uh, I would go into more, but unfortunately, this podcast is not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, so you know what, uh, Raid, if you want me to keep going with that ad, you're going to have to pay me. Uh, but yeah, I think the uh, PC client moving forward. The other thing, too, is it allows for more like hybrid gameplay, which I think is one of the big things that Genshin did really well. Uh, to be honest, like I don't think Genshin is a mobile game. Because a lot of people play it on their computer, they play it on their PlayStation, stuff like that. If you could, if Epic Seven could move into that sphere, uh, I think it would do really well for increasing the amount of players, the player base. Because I mean, you know, they're not really, really good at marketing their game. To be completely no. honest, like yeah, it, it seems marketing's like marketing's dookie. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. no shade on you know gimmick or mashu if you guys are part of marketing but like it's it's real bad i'll be real like i never saw an epic 7 ad until like two and a half years into the game and unfortunately a lot of times for mobile games especially older mobile games i mean let's be real four years in the mobile game space is is a middle-aged game uh you know not everything can be uh puzzles and dragons hasn't puzzles and dragons isn't that like you know 20 years old at this point like i I feel like i don't know which came first puzzles or dragons or one piece Uh, i i think they both came out at the same time uh you know and it's still around but like four years old like you gotta like really ramp up your marketing uh they have been doing a lot more ads now but it's like Bro, release an anime, release a PC client, put yourself on Steam, like take some of the money that I've put into this game and and reinvest it. I actually thought that when Lost Ark came out, that would have been the absolute perfect time, the absolute beyond perfect time to have cross promotion. You had Asmongold streaming Lost Ark to a hundred what was it i think it was like two hundred thousand people you had a million concurrent players on lost ark smilegate there's a could lot have of just, missed opportunity it, you launch that in the in global and you go bam epic seven crossover do you like mobile games do you like this animation smilegate should have put lost ark crossover promotion into epic seven they should have put epic seven into lost ark could you imagine the amount of players yeah launch arky as a pet lost Ark, arky as a pet easy done even i was if thinking you... about that if they yeah. had collabed with each other that's good cross promotion for both things you know Absolutely. since smilegate wants more promotion for both of their games that's a win-win yeah. I don't know why they didn't lost, think about that or lost if Arky, they indeed. And if they did consider it, what stopped them from doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like the only thing I could think of was that at the time Smilegate didn't own 
100% of they were still in that process of like buying out super creative so i don't know if there was something there obviously you know that's all back end deals and stuff like that but like just even anything when you had 1 million concurrent players to just go hey by the way look at these s3 animations for epic 7 even if you got 1% of those, even if you got a fraction of a percent of those 1 million concurrent viewer, like players, to even give Epic 7 a try, that could have been the turning point right there. Not only that, but like, you know, you would have had, um, you would have had streamers try it out. Uh, like even when streamers logged in, that there was just a little notification on the news section, hey, we're doing a collab with epic seven boom right there i think that that was the biggest missed opportunity that smilegate has ever had when it came to when it came to epic seven yeah because if they did like some kind of cross promotion like when lost Ark came out i had like ideas in mind like oh if they had a collab what if they made some kind of check-in thing where it's like you know if you have Lost Ark and Epic Seven both downloaded, you can get an Arky pet in Lost Ark, mm -hmm. and you can get, um, I don't know, a Makoko pet in Epic Seven. Ooh, that would have actually been really, really big, yeah. Yeah, that would have been, like, oh, dude, seven-day login, you get the Makoko pet, like, the limited Makoko pet for Epic Seven, you get the Arky pet for Lost Ark, you know, I, I think that it would have been it would have been huge. That could have super revitalized like Epic Seven because I've always felt like Epic Seven is always just in a state of it's doing okay, right? The game is never like this is like, regardless of like what a lot of people say, right? You know, you like anywhere anywhere you go, you'll see people be like, oh, Epic Seven, dead game nobody plays everybody left everybody's playing something else anytime a new game comes out it's like oh epic seven's dead uh this game came out but it's like yeah where's where's counterside at where's uh artery gear at where's uh you know any other number of the uh um uh, you know epic seven killers right um but like i've always felt that epic seven is just in this state of perpetual stasis like it's not growing but it's not really dying right like and, and yeah. i feel like smilegate has to do something like above and beyond like absolutely crazy because like the stuff that they're doing is just it kind of like i feel like they're always a step behind everybody else you know, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can see what works and what doesn't work and then just kind of steal that idea and then do it yourself. But you're not ever going to be the Genshin. You're never going to get to Genshin Impact levels without doing something outside of the norm. Like, well, that's Genshin just, yeah. is sort of a different game than how Epic 7 is played, but I, I oh, get what sure. you mean. But I, as far as you know, trying to do something different to make Epic 7 stand out. Um, as we've been saying, that was a totally missed opportunity by having that collaboration with Lost Ark just to get your name out there. And it, it comes down to marketing. There, as we've established already, the marketing for Epic 7 isn't so great. There's like lots of ways that Smilegate can approach the marketing for this game and i'm not sure why they're not capitalizing on it especially because there's other gotchas out there you'll hear about them because they really really market their games meanwhile epic 7 you don't see a whole lot or anything exciting about it so most people that come in is probably like oh i saw an ad about a collab or oh my friend told me to play this true True, and I think, like, one of the big things is, like, it, it seems like, it seems kind of like each region that a game comes out from has completely different marketing stances, right? Like, games that come from, like, China, I feel like they go giga hard on their marketing. Like, I feel like they just 
like 90% of their game's budget is marketing. Like you buy, uh, you know, a Rich Campbell, a, a Tectone, uh, you know, a Pokimane, um, XQC, whatever. Like you are plastered everywhere. Like you have ads, everything. You bait as many normies as literally humanly possible. And then, you know, after like a month or so, when then the game kind of goes back down into like, it settles to where it is, right? Um, after yeah. your big streamers leave and stuff like that and the dust settles, but like KR games, I feel like a lot of times they just kind of go, eh, well, we'll put a game out and if it does good, then it, yeah. Rich Campbell did play E7, and I think that that was another mistake on Epic 7 as well. I think that when, you know, people like Lakari, when Rich Campbell, uh, stuff like that, when those type of people give, uh, you know, um, Dyrus or uh, Cutie Pie, stuff like that, when those gamers, when those streamers, when those people with like that giant reach come in, like you should just be like, hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? We need to capitalize. You need to capitalize on that uh, and make those people they feel welcome and stuff. That. They did that when um, Atsui, I think his name, Atsui. Oh, the Atsu? Yeah, yeah, Atsu? yeah, yeah, the Genshin, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, they, they did the same thing to him when, I think, uh, did they, did they originally sponsor him or something? I don't remember, but um, when he started playing the game and getting a huge um viewership from it they immediately brought him on as like oh you're gonna be a influencer for e7 but then we don't really see streams um that were epic 7 related from yeah this anymore like i think that's um, one of the one of those things as well right is like you kind of like if you're gonna do that like yes yeah, because when you brought him up i'm like i was gonna say like i think i've only ever seen that dude play epic seven like one time whereas people like wakari you know he literally played it all day every day uh and mauled it out super hard uh you know to the point where you know well we all know what happened we all know what happened with wakari and and his account rip in peace his his ravi but like you know you had people like cutie pie and dyrus like they were actually like regularly playing the game and i think that like you know when you get people that big that are regularly playing the game like that's a huge opportunity yeah. versus like i would have yeah i would have liked to see them continue playing too cuz i think that was good for bringing in more publicity for the existence of epic 7 and mm -hmm. hopefully bringing in more players um unfortunately that didn't last very long and i don't know why um i wish i knew you know what could have kept them playing and if smilegate would have tried to capitalize on that because it's business and also going with this whole marketing thing it, it takes money to make money yep. and when you mentioned that all these chinese companies go ham on their marketing that helps to put the name out there because it is a free-to-play game so there's no barrier to entry and more people could be willing to give the game a try yeah. Um, on that note, other avenues they could have taken for marketing is merch. And oh. I do understand that recently <laughs> they have started releasing more merch. I don't know why it took them so long to finally come out with merch. Um, but it's an issue right now because of like logistics and shipping. Because we have a worldwide audience, but shipping only is coming out of South Korea. And those prices are expensive it costs me oh. three times as much like i would have to pay three times as much for an arky plush to get it to my house than the arky costs itself i feel like smilegate should consider because they do have global uh offices i understand they have an office in la for global here um they have their office in japan um maybe they have one in for europe and brazil i'm not sure um but if they have local offices they should consider shipping you know a good amount of their merch to these offices and having and hire like another kind of warehouse team or something 
that could fulfill those orders and ship them out. So the shipping costs would be, you know, more feasible for the people that are in that area or vicinity. Or, hear me out, Farsi. They are partnered with Amazon. Use your Amazon too. connections to literally ship stuff. Like, I shouldn't have to pay $70 for a t-shirt. Like, that's yeah. just, that's the reality of it for it. And it's not even a good t-shirt. Bro, you can outsource that shit to Teespring, and it would cost, like, $5 in shipping. Like, worldwide. They got places everywhere, man. Like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like... They are so bad on merch. Like, I'll be real. Like, I don't know if if have you seen like the little chibi uh, figures that they put out? Yeah, those look terrible. I I I they yeah. They, I don't know who they hired to make those, but they should probably consider getting somebody the one else. that Riot literally, uses. Yeah, literally like, anybody who, else, because that was yeah real bad. Um, I was disappointed seeing those. Yeah, I was like excited because somebody was like, oh, did you see the new the figures that are coming out? And I'm like, no. And then I looked at them and I'm like, uh, I don't even uh. play League of Legends anymore, but I will still gladly buy figurines from Riot because those look good. Yeah, I can't say the same for Epic Seven. I actively play Epic Seven and I would like to support them. But if their merch doesn't look that great, why yeah. bother wasting money? Yeah, and the... I'm gonna be honest. Um, I saw this website. I don't remember what it's called. I just I just happened to stumble upon it, and there was like, they they make T-shirts and stuff like that. Um, from like fan art. There's like a bunch of different artists, and they have their fan art, uh, and they yeah. get featured on a T-shirt. And I saw one that had ran on it, and it was really cool. So I ended up buying that, and it cost me twenty bucks. Yep. It's a very, very decent, you know, quality t-shirt, and I'm satisfied with it. And I wish I could do the same for Smilegate, but as you said, I don't want to spend $70 on getting a mediocre t-shirt just to support your favorite game. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, it, if they, like, I know so many people that would buy merch if the shipping was better and, like, the prices were better and it was more reasonable like you know they've got like these things it's like oh here's a little acrylic standy it costs like ten dollars but like it costs you twenty dollars to ship it nobody's gonna pay for that like i would buy bro i would buy a uh like one of the mouse like the game mats like i need a new like mouse pad type deal and i would buy one of those in a heartbeat but i'm not gonna spend like you know a hundred bucks to get one it's just it is what it is i was yeah, gonna buy a actually, mug and a desk pad but it costs like a hundred bucks yeah exactly sky falcon i yeah. i have um i'm actually using uh an epic seven um uh, huge like i don't know if it's called a mouse pad or a the game, point, mat, the game but, mat yeah uh it's it's actually custom made i saw this really really cool fan art and there's like a company that makes custom mouse pads so i mm. just you know nice. gave them this photo and they made it and i'm like this is the best decision of my life and i sucks it didn't come from smilegate but you know right. it didn't cost me a hundred dollars just to get it and yeah it's super quality and everything oh yeah no for sure and like that's the thing is like you know people might be like oh but that's you know gray market it's unlicensed merch who cares like it costs twenty dollars versus you know like if smilegate wants my money for that merch uh, then they're going to have to step up their game with their shipping. They're going to have to step up their game with their quality. Um, I, I remember, yeah, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, and I think that's the other thing, too, is, like, imagine, like, you're walking around, uh, you know, at an anime convention, and you're wearing, like, a super sick Ran shirt, and somebody's like, oh, hey, I really like that shirt. Well, first off, this isn't a real situation because, like, people don't talk to each other. And they're all a bunch of antisocial nerds anyways. <laughs> so they'd be like, oh, man, I really like that shirt, but I don't want to ask that girl, you know, what it's from because she'll think I'm fucking weird, you know. But, you know, imagine in this theoretical world, you know, you're at an anime convention and you're wearing a RAN shirt and someone's like, oh, hey, I really like that. What's that from? You know, you go, oh, hey, Epic 7, blah, blah, blah. You know, play the animation. Here, let me show you. 
uh, you know, the gameplay, and then bam, not only do you have a new friend, but you have a new player uh, in the game, right? You know, so... Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> another thing. It, the merch helps spread the word and puts the name out there. Yeah. Especially if the merch looks good. Right, right. So, I mean, there's, there's just so much stuff that I feel like they drop the ball on... Um, on marketing stuff like that yeah it's it is uh it's a little rough and i think that they need to just do do better or the game is just going to stay in this stagnant period and yeah yeah there's just i don't know so far it seems like we're getting a lack of marketing we're getting a lack of content we're getting a lack of nerfs i don't know what smile gate's doing well, but. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll ever nerf. Like after of the. Of course they won't. But. Well, I mean, it's always gonna be a power creep. But the least they will. could do is dress buffs for units that need it. Like I don't know, says. When was the last time you saw says be viable? Um, and then. What do you mean? Uh, you can still. You can still ox lots says bomb in Guild Wars. You know. That's... What about RTA? That so, sounds so copium. Yeah, but like, so here, I mean, here's the thing, though, is like, um, and this was something that I kind of talked about a little bit before the, the podcast on stream, is like, I don't necessarily think that every unit needs to be viable in, in RTA. Like, I understand people wanting to be able to use their units in RTA, but like, I don't think that everyone has to, and I don't think that everyone ever will be. And I think that yeah, if something course. works in PvE or in Guild Wars or in Arena... Like, I think it's it's perfectly fine to do that. But, you know, for your uh, your point on, like, nerfs, um, we saw the fallout that happened with just the mere mention that they were going to nerf, and I put that in air quotes that nobody can see because I don't have my cam on, uh, nerf Arya's art, which didn't have anything to do with gameplay, uh, didn't change any mechanics, didn't change anything. It was just a visual... Um, and you had people foaming at the mouth. They wanted to refund their entire accounts. They lost their absolute minds over something that didn't change the game mechanically. Now, imagine that they nerfed Y Young right now. Uh, I triple S Y Young. There's plenty of people that spent probably, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, uh, to triple S a Y Young because of the way that her mechanics work in game. Um, I, and, you know, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't care if I don't get a refund or, a, you know, a selector or anything like that. But I think that, like, those people are just such a small minority of a small minority of people that play the game. And if people like the people who lost their absolute minds over the Aria potential nerf and the Vivian, you know, nerf, even though that wasn't technically a nerf because her art wasn't released yet. Um, the fact that they lost it and frothed so hard over that just made Smilegate go, oh, well, we're never nerfing anything again. We were, even if we were on the fence, like, could you imagine the people that if they nerfed Hua Young today would just absolutely lose their mind and just want to refund, like, their entire accounts? Whether yeah, or not it's good was, for the uh, game or not, like, it doesn't matter. It was a little absurd, and I feel sorry for the people that felt that way because of a uh, art thing well mm -hmm. again it's i don't know what people are intentionally coming here for if they're here for like you know the booba waifus i mean they could get that content elsewhere for free mm -hmm. you know if oh, they no, yeah, really that's what I really said. needed it in their yeah. lives and to <laughs> you know, to threaten to quit the game or whatever yeah. over this uh, visual nerf was a little excessive and I kind of feel sorry for the people that had to feel that way. Yeah. Well, I always, I always told them, I'm like, hey, look, if you feel this strongly about it, you know what? Don't buy the packs anymore and find yourself a really good artist and then you can commission yourself in art to have, a, you know, the art of Arya in whatever form you want it can be whatever like and it would just be you know obviously it would be way better spent um uh, you know your money would be way better spent that way um you know but they didn't like that one they didn't like that retort and just called me uh 
um, a censorship advocate, but like, that's the thing, right? Is like, if I spend X amount of dollars, like, let's say I spent, you know, uh, $50,000 on a Tesla. And then one day Elon Musk comes to my house, takes my, takes my Tesla and then gives me a 98 Honda Civic with one spare tire. Of course you'd be salty because you yeah. lose the functionality and upgrades and everything that right. came with your original Tesla. Exactly. Um, that, did, that didn't even happen with Ari. It's just like a visual change. It's like it's yeah. like you got a it's like you got a white Tesla, and then people were complaining that it was too bright. Then it's like okay, we're gonna take back your white Tesla and give you an off-white one. And then you're gonna be like, what gives? Tesla, I don't like you guys. I am going to return my Tesla. I wanted it white. Give yeah. me back my money. Right. You know, that's basically kind of what happened with this whole Aria situation. Well, I mean, I was saying that one, like, it was more like somebody complained that the Tesla was too white. So they go, okay, well, sorry, guys. You know, the government is regulating us into only giving you uh, off-white Teslas. But mine was more for, like, mechanical nerfs, right? Like, so, you know, I spent that money because I wanted a Tesla. You know, I wanted... Uh, this was this was what I was told. This is the horsepower that it would do. Uh, that is Hua Young, right? Like, this was, this was mechanically what I bought. Uh, first off... Do you trust Smilegate to be able to do nerfs? Um, when was the last nerf they had like that the actually made sense? Actual nerf or like giving like us a selector actual... because because no, like an actual nerf that made sense because this unit was too broken, not Silver a like Blade oh we changed Aramintha. the oh okay can you elaborate Corvus. on that oh, one? Oh no, Fire Corvus, sorry. Yeah, it was Fire Corvus because literally Fire Corvus would solo entire teams. Yeah. No, that was the last one. They've never done... I don't think they've ever done an actual nerf since Fire Corvus. Oh, um, there's also Falcon or Clary. She was before... She was before... Um, okay, okay. Yeah. She was before Corvus. That was a long... That was long before Corvus. Um, and then Silverblade Araminta, Sage Ball, uh, Rock God, and Jade Scorpion. Jade Scorpion was before Fire Corvus. Rock God was afterwards. Uh, Rock God would... Okay, yeah, Rock God didn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, Scorpion nerf was kind of... It is what it is. But Champ Zerato was just fixing a bug, even though everybody was big mad about it. And Champ or, uh, C. Domino was literally... There was no functional change. It was just a word, and we got a selector. Um, yeah, but the same thing happened with a purchase, right? Yeah, the green purchase. Yeah, and you know, because like, and, and that's the thing, right? It's like so. So the last time that they did it was was the crystal, yeah, rock god nerf because of the because it was just too fast and and free to play as we're we're able to keep up in speed with the CR push on a you know, a, a two-star character. But, like, uh, unintentional, the, the Fire Corvus nerf, literally at the point, and if you were to put old-school Fire Corvus in the meta now, we would have so many more ways to deal with him. But because he could S3, which, like, just gave him heals and, like, just too much stuff uh, for, like, half of his rage, his fighting spirit bar, uh, he was literally unkillable at the time. Basically, you had to, like, line it up perfect, and, like, you had to soul burn SSB S3 to make him unbuffable, unhealable, and then hope that you killed him, but it was it would take so much, and you didn't have RTA at the time. You literally just had Arena and Guild Wars, and so by the time you did, Guild uh, Arena Lightning would just kill you. Like, you just couldn't kill him. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous. So that was, like, the last one. But like uh, defense bonus, yeah, defense on a defense scaling unit, heals, yeah, and then you hit him, you put him on Durandal. It was just, it was just too much for the gear level at the time. Um, but I'm, I feel like when we had the giant fallout, 
with the nerfs between Silverblade Araminta and Sage Ball, because at the time they were Sage Ball stripped two buffs. Uh, you couldn't have immunity, uh, anything like that. Like it was, if you had both of those units, you were literally godlike in arena. That was just the the reality of it. And when they had to nerf those, um, there was such a huge fallout. Oh, well, they had to nerf them. And then that was when we had like the whole like KR uh, press conference and like all that stuff. We got ML5 selectors. Uh, we got all kinds of free stuff because at the very beginning, like everybody was so mad about it that they were like, okay, well, we're going to have, we have to nerf these because everybody's super mad. Uh, and they literally gutted them into the point that uh, they were never used again until they were rebuffed. Like Sage Ball, they were gutted so hard that they never saw play again until are, like much, much later. What about Arby's case? I heard he got nerfed after release and then buffed again because so he was so he was bad? Release Arby was dog shit. He got buffed to give him attack after he came back. That was too strong. So then they took the attack away, but then everybody just started running. Uh, well, Alexa's basket wasn't a thing at the time, and then Alexa's basket got buffed, and then Arby got gapped. So that was the timeline of that. But like original release Arby and even release Spectre to Nebria, both of those were pretty bad, uh, and then they had to get buffed. Steny never got nerfed, but like yeah, Arby came back with like attack buff, and. So it was like, yeah, it was ridiculous. So then they took away his attack buff. But then they okay. gave Gab on Alexa's basket. So, yeah, it is what it is. Well, I'm, I guess with these new ML5s that Smilegate has been releasing recently, um, I'm glad that they're taking like a safe balance approach, even though people might feel like these units aren't, you know, see Lilius level of broken. I think it's good to release a unit somewhat quote-unquote balanced first, test out the waters, and then if they need a buff, it's easier to get a buff, and it sounds better to get a buff than to release the unit, have them be too broken, and then the meta is in shambles, they don't want to nerf it, and then they have to proceed by releasing like four or five units that can quote unquote counter this menace of a unit I um i think that's good but at the same time kind of like what happened with this recent um collab with fma edward was very mediocre at first mm -hmm. and i can understand that but at least he got a buff so now he's more viable which is good Unfortunately, it does whatever that they released in this collab, it really doesn't compare to what we had in the other collabs with um, Rimuru and friends and who else? Um, even Rem and Amelia. These, these collab units are so meta. They were so broken on release and people will still continue using them, you know, all these seasons later. Oh, and sure. I don't think I don't think people will say the same about Roy, which is unfortunate. Oh yeah, no, they definitely won't. But like, here's the thing, right? Is even with like collab characters when they came out, like um, Elfelt or um, Jacko, right? Like, I feel yeah. like there's this expectation that just because a character is limited, just because it's a collab character, it has to be at a certain level of power. And I feel like that there's always this shifting yardstick of power, right? It used to be SSB. Everything was SSB or RB. Like every unit that did damage that came out was like, well, it doesn't do as much damage as Arbiter Vildred. So why would I ever use this unit? Oh, it's not as like 100% pickable as SSB. And I feel like now we've moved into the, well, it's not Hua Young. Or the one thing that I hate the most is when people are like, can it one shot Proof of Valor A Ravi? Well, yeah, it can't. Yeah, that's a little ridiculous. And it's like, 
nothing like short of like a cracked out straws one shots proof of our a ravi like it, well, it just doesn't yeah in the lore strays is supposed to be really strong so it makes a lot of sense that he's that type of unit that will right. one shot a tank uh the problem is you know compared to hua young strays is like a paper thin stick after oh. he nukes somebody he just dies right after that because he'll run out of in his invincibility but hua young she's a menace she will do just as much damage as a strays but will be so much harder to kill For and sure. she's only what? she's only an uh rgb5 you know she's not a uh god killer she's um she's not even ml5 and a lot of these viable rta units um, aren't as viable because of Hua Young's and Rimuru and Friend's existence. True, but we we're talking about being able to one-shot Proof of Hour. A Ravi as a as a benchmark, um, which most Hua Youngs, unless they're super cracked and like pushed by A Lots, typically aren't going to do. But like that's like one of the arguments that I see a lot is like people were like, "Oh, ML Pavel sucks because ML Pavel can't one-shot Proof of Hour A Ravi." And it's like, okay, but he's not supposed to. They're like, yeah. well, he did in the in the video. And I'm like, okay, don't ever that take like that. That was like 14K. Yeah, that was like a 14K <laughs> A-Ravi. Like, yeah, is is they do that to make it look better. Okay, right, you know, it is what it is. You know, they gave us, give us April Fool's Ross. That's true. Yeah, then, then we'll one-shot everything, right? But, like, uh, the, like you're going to have that forever. And honestly, like, we had this argument back when, around when Blood Moon Haste came out, is that we had this period where all of the units that came out were okay. They weren't amazing. They weren't super power creepy. They weren't, you know, like, the most giga meta unit ever. They were okay. They were side grades nobody was happy they wanted power creep but then they got power creep and then they weren't happy that they got power creep because everybody wants a hua young until that hua young is on the right side of the screen right yep. as soon as it's on the right side of the screen they're like oh i hate this unit this is the worst unit how dare you pick the unit that i wanted to pick before i got to pick it this is this is unacceptable we need to nerf this unit you know, like, I have a pretty cracked out Hua Young, but I don't want to go against Hua Young. I have all the Hua Young counters. I have every way to fight her. I just don't want to. So I just ban her so that nobody gets to use her, right? Um, yeah, I do the yeah. same thing. Yeah, exactly. I use her in Guild Wars. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we're both standard players. So, you know, for standard yeah, players, she she's... standard. Yeah, you know, because like, oh, they draft Hua Young. Well, you better go eat a cleave or, you know, draft a Kisei or an Opsig or something like that. And now all of a sudden you're not playing standard anymore. Now you're playing aggro, which is not, you know, my forte. It's not my strong suit. So I don't I don't want to, you know, so that is how it is. But like everybody wants power creep. They want this big meta shift until it happens. And then they're like, well, I need something to beat this new unit that I don't want to deal with as well. So it, I think at the end of the day, most people just don't know what they want. And then when they get what they ask for, it's not what they want. And then they're mad. I think at the end of the day, we just have a lot of complainers. And oh, there's that's people true, yeah. that like, there's just always something to complain about. I think Smilegate are, is trying their best to address some of the things that we're asking for. Obviously, they're not going to address everything if it's not, you know, within you know their limits or feasibility or anything like that but i think overall they are trying their best and it's kind of hard to balance a game especially when you're not regularly getting nerfs unlike these other games like for league of legends for example they do frequent balance changes and adjustments and you're constantly getting nerfs and buffs it's never stagnant um, as far as the balance there goes. And of course, it's not a perfectly balanced game because metas are always going to shift. But for a gacha game like Epic 7, um, because they're afraid of units losing value, they're really reluctant about getting these nerfs. 
they have to be basically walking on eggshells on how they want to approach these healthy buffs without making a unit too broken and then releasing a unit that is somewhat usable um, without being broken and we had units re released recently that is like whatever like uh, Sharoon for example yeah she had interesting mechanics and she has some some viability but do people want to abuse her no why would you use her when you can use Hua Young true the one thing though I will say is that like you can't really compare Epic 7 and gacha games to things like uh, Dota or League of Legends, right? Because in Dota and League of Legends, you're not paying, you know, thousands of dollars to be competitive in the game, right? Uh, yeah. Well, and, and I think that's, like, one of the really big things that, like, you got to take away from, like, from nerfing units in Epic 7. I just don't, I just don't think that, like, overall, it will it would be viable i mean i know some people say summoner's war does it but i think that like where epic seven is they've already set such a precedence that if they nerf something you get so much stuff um that you know the community would just lose their absolute minds over like any sort of nerfs also like i said i don't think that smile gate i don't trust them to like take it from like an 11 to a 10 i feel like they go from like 11 to 5. Although I will say that the most recent buff cycles I think have been okay. I, yeah, I am yeah. I think I I've I've been okay with all the balance patches that they've released recently. I have no issues with them except maybe a few didn't make sense like Captain Rickers that felt more Dude, like a nerf. They got it my boy, right? Yeah. Yeah, they don't um, do they don't do nerfs. They just do buffs and I put it that in air quotes. You know, yeah, they that they got it. Seem like boy. a buff to me. Whatever <laughs> they took out is what made him good, and yeah, I they don't know, completely changed captain, his whole kit. Yeah, uh, all these Captain Rickerous players are in shambles now because their favorite. Um, I think I was you the know, only person. Is no longer. <laughs> oh, I've actually, I've queued into a few people that use Captain Rickerous. Have you? He's pretty sweet. Guard. Yeah, he's he's yeah. pretty cool. Um, but like. Yeah, there's like a lot of times where they'll like, they'll they were they were gonna change her Valen, and it's like, bro, who asked for this? Like, yeah, for real. especially when they made him like a banshee unit. It's like, wait a minute, you wanted yeah. to buff this guy, but you just locked him into being a banshee unit now. I mean, I so guess to then... be fair, like if they literally came out and they said, look, no one uses her Valen in RTA except for like three people. We don't give a shit about those three people. This is your new Banshee unit. This is the change we're making. If you don't like it, that's it. Sucks to suck. You know, and then just go from there. Um, but uh, Dizzy Droid said that they think they should do more buffs like they did with Edward. Uh, just more often, just like small buffs. Like, I think that that would actually be really good. Like, if they did more frequent small buffs. Right? Like, I think yeah. they did that on the, sm on the spot small buff because... Uh, the response that people were giving with the collab unit wasn't oh, yeah. very good. So it's like, why would people spend money on a collab unit that's not even going to do what he's supposed to be doing? So yeah. I think what they did for these on-the-spot buffs made more sense because from a marketing perspective, how are they going to make back that money if it did cost them any money to run this collab and then... You know, they get no return on investment if no one wants to spend on this banner. Oh, yeah. No, um, I completely I, agree with you. Yeah, 100%. So, I think for these other units that have been out for a while, they just need to wait for these balance patch changes to release. And then, you know, after seeing them in play and no one's using them, mm -hmm. then that's when Smilegate starts addressing, like, okay, how can we get these players to start using these units more or why is no one playing these units what can we do to make them better so i think yeah. whatever they're doing right now with the balance patch um releases is very healthy very very you know doable nothing crazy nothing meta breaking right out of the blue um and then it's good to see that a lot of these units that were not used are finally becoming more viable. Like 
Wanderer's Silk, for example. True. Um, she did absolutely nothing. Nobody cared about that unit. Suddenly I, uh, she I used her a... in raid, actually. Uh, I used her oh, in my really? normal raid group, yeah, because she gave a lot of morale with the team that I was using. Um, I, I don't use her anymore, but, yeah, I was actually using her in normal raid, but, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I do like to. I do like seeing some units like see some uh, play. Like, I'll, I'll be real. My favorite one was the green Armin change. I am a green Armin enjoyer. I absolutely love green Armin. Uh, one of my favorite anti cleave units. But like, I, I think that like the other thing too, right? Is I think that the meta is always a trickle down. Like, even if a unit gets buffed, uh, it takes a little while. Like, we're seeing a lot of people pick up DJ Basar now, um, mostly because Light decided that, e that DJ Basar was the was one of the greatest units in the in the game for this meta currently. Uh, and I saw probably like five or six DJ Basars that I queued into um, right before this podcast. Um, it's been a minute since his buff. You know, he made Payra go away, uh, and now people are using him for other things. Personally, I always enjoy when everybody follows Light E7, uh, his meta, because they don't have the gear quality that he has, uh, and it's usually free points for me. Um, and then they so, get bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> they get bamboozled because they don't have Light E7 gear, and then I'm like, ooh, boy, Light E7 clones, let's go free points. Yeah, boy. Oh, man, you know, that's usually pretty good for me. But I always think that, like, um, you know, uh, especially initially on, like, patches, right? Uh, new units, stuff like that. It's always a trickle down. Um, the people who are complaining about the meta being stale, uh, how there's no diversity whatsoever. Um, I think a lot of those people either don't really play that much RTA or they just refuse to change. Um, and yeah. they only see the same thing because, well, they only draft the same thing. Uh, or they watch, like, a streamer that just drafts the same draft a thousand times. And they're like, yeah, this, this is the only units that I see. But, like, if you mm -hmm. actually play the ladder, like, I literally, like I said, I saw a Tayu. I saw a Summer Break Charlotte today. Uh, somebody, like, I I've seen, I got dumpstered by a Speedy Dizzy the other night. Like, I was, I forgot, I was like, Shh, ah, crap, I gotta play the game, I gotta play RTA or I'm gonna decay, I queued up into it at like 2 in the morning, dude last picks a Dizzy, and I'm like, you know what, I wanna see it, and that thing yeah. destroyed me, and I'm like, Dizzy Enjoyer playing... in 2022, let's go. If people are playing something different, and it, they're making it work for them, like... I have more respect for that. Instead of all these people being like meta slaves and wanting to copy somebody else because they see it working for them. Like for me, I am a ML Sermia enjoyer. I will pick her in like 90% of my drafts. I will early pick her. She'll be like my first or second I pick. I remember you know. last and season I went up against you and like, yeah, you second picked ML Sermia and I'm like, I'm like, why did she why did she pick that? I didn't pick anything. Confusing and then I'm pretty people, sure, right? like, I'm pretty sure I remember it because, like, immediately, right out of the gate, I fucking dual attacked. And I'm like, damn it. I'm like, that's why she picked it. Yeah. She knew full well my first attack was going to be a dual attack. And there <laughs> we go. I'm dead. I'm dead, boys. This is just how it I goes. I know it's going to happen. I <laughs> The thing I hate the most is like, because uh, from a standard player's perspective, you're sitting there playing like frenzy five to eight matches and you can just get screwed over by one dual attack. Yep. And I hate those the most. So I, when Sermia released, I was like, this is going to be my god unit right here. I'm going to pick her into everything and I know she's going to proc. And now I've been chilling in Legend all season. And people are still questioning why I always early pick Sermia. And I'm like, True. don't doubt the strats, bro. It's working. True. Okay? I mean, not only that, but like, yeah, if you're going like, you know, if you're a standard player and you're going like a couple frenzies, like eventually she's going to get the fighting spirit to to rip off that S3 naturally. So, you know, it, it works out either way, right? Yeah, exactly. So I've been making it work for me. And of course... I'm not going to recommend to everyone, like, hey, ML Sermi is a great unit. Everyone should start building her and abusing her. Like, everyone has their own play style and everyone has their own strategy. And I think to get the most out of the game and enjoy it is just play what you like and figure out how you can synergize your team comps 
and make them work together okay. and you know make do with what you have obviously not everyone's a whale everyone can roll cracked gear but instead of trying to say like hey should i build this unit like this or like this like it doesn't matter as long as you can figure out a way to make it work for you no you need to put pen set on everything oh of course um i guess i need to go back to katie's that's right yeah if you don't have pen set on every unit like are you even really playing the game you you gotta have injury on everything too that's yeah. the future <laughs> that's fair yeah no like i always i always hate when you post up a unit and somebody be like okay well that's nice but like yo where's your pen set at bro and I'm like, you don't have to put pen set on absolutely everything. Like, it, you yeah. know, you, you just don't. And they're like, no, dude, pen set, bro. I was watching, Last... I was watching uh, Elf Mage, and he said that pen set Ruel was good. Uh, so if you don't have pen set Ruel, like, you know, are you even, are you even playing at like the legend level of play? And it's like, man, this is this is some Facebook level conversation stuff here. Yeah, if you don't have pens set on your 300 speed DN, what are you even doing, bro? Like, I hate the fact that people, the moment you post a ran, somebody's like, "That's good, but it's not 300 speed." And I'm like, "Do yeah, you even have?" There's you... weirdos out there that are posting up or using 25k HP proof of valor rans, and it's oh, I'm like I'm gonna be one of those weirdos here soon. <laughs> You know why? I, like, I became that weirdo recently because I don't have other speed gear to put on mine. Well, like, the thing is, right, is, like, I see everybody, they're like, oh, if it's not 300 speed, don't even bother. If it's not 300 speed, don't even bother. But it's like, bro, are you playing in High Emperor Legend? Oh, you're yeah. not? Okay, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, all these people will just quote, like, these, you know, Elf Mage level gear to, like, yeah, randos on in bronze. And I'm like, bro, you are doing everybody, like, a disservice by like setting this benchmark like it, it that's not a reality like that's not a real level of gear like, like yeah people yeah. don't have different elos in mind like the question they should be approaching is like hey is this ran good enough to compete in my elo right now which is bronze like yeah. okay you have a 250 speed ran you you can make it work Mm -hmm. um, but if someone's asking like um i want to reach challenger do you think this ran's good enough you know, it doesn't matter. Right. As long as you're making it work for you. Obviously, if you're complaining that you're getting outsped because you're running a 250 rand, then the problem is going to be with you, not the elo. Remember fighting a 320 speed rand in silver? Well, they won't be in silver very long unless they're just trying to smurf. In which case, you know, it is what it is, you know. Um, but, Farsi, we've been going for about an hour and a half, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, because I feel like otherwise we'll just people talk for another like three hours about stuff and go off on tangents. Um, but you had a really good time. Thank you for, uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, I'm sure that we can do this again in the future because I'm sure we'll have more things to talk about. Um, where can everybody, oh, any closing remarks? Um, well, thanks for having me on. It was a pleasure coming here. This was a very interesting and fun as always. Um, if people would like to check out my content, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I am Fart Pancakes. I stream on twitch.tv slash Fart Pancakes. Um, I am trying to finish Legend this season, so hopefully people will stop doubting my Emil Sermia tech. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, go make sure you guys go give her a like. I'll have on the YouTube video, I'll have everything linked down in the description. Um, but yeah, I hope you finish legend as well. Uh, I'm going to try, uh, but, uh, I've, I've been a little bit sidetracked with, with world of Warcraft lately. It's, it's bad. Oh, yeah. The new expansion yeah. with the Lich King. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not new. It's, it's like, I mean, it's, 12 it's years like old. Yeah. yeah the, the classic classic. But, you know, yeah. At least it's content. It, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You know, I get to relive my, uh, you know, relive my childhood as a as a boomer this time around. Um, but uh, for those of you on YouTube, as always, if you like the content, like, fave, subscribe. Uh, and I might, I'll, I'll probably do another one of these in in two weeks if I remember. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Take it easy, homies. Peace out. <laughs>